After not really being talked about for a few years, Lotte God was thrusted back into the public eye when one of his old speeches went viral and became unfunny because it was overused as hell. Thank you so much twitter.com. Very awesome. Not many people really knew much about this guy past that point, however. And if you got curious, like I did, and looked into him, you found a decades worth of iconic meltdowns and moments thanks to our star of the video. Originally starting off as nothing more than a rookie player in the FGC, Lotte God has become one of the most well-known Twitch streamers on the internet. And it wasn't accomplished by grinding, being good at games, or even being super super parasocial with his audience. He did it by being the biggest hater on the planet. Let me ask you guys a question. Do any of you niggas know why I turned off Tekken? Because that same stalker Deadass was the first nigga that I matched up with. That nigga stalks me every time I cut on Tekken, man. I want to kill that nigga on me. Lotte God possesses almost every bad attribute a person on the internet can have. Super toxic, a sore loser, and completely lacking a filter, which leads to him constantly feeding the people who obsessively watch him, waiting for another one of these meltdowns. And oh boy, there are a lot of these. The best thing I can equate Lotte God to is a car crash. No matter how gross or violent one of these car crashes are, people literally cannot look away. And because of this, Lotte God has managed to build up a real fan base who dead ass show up and give him money just to watch him. And I desperately wanted to find out why. So let's investigate the cult of personality that is Lotte God. But before that, you should consider subscribing. Look at this graph, it's so bad. You can fix that if you subscribe, so you should do it. I have a Discord, Twitter, and Instagram. Those are the main things I use. I do VC pings in my servers occasionally. Channel members get uh, videos early, either up to a day or much earlier than like a week or something. I don't know. $5 channel members get special Discord roles, get to play games with me, and get their names mentioned at the end of this video. So you should give me your money. Anyway, back to the video. Like most of our stories, this one takes place in the dystopian era that was 2006. A year after the birth of the Antichrist, the YouTube audience at the time were introduced to Lotte God, or Sparrow25 as he chose to call himself at the time. The boy the line spell, the one, the only, D spell, aka whatever you want to call me, the line spell, D spell, whatever you want to do. Hit me up on the Twitter, we can talk about whatever you want to talk about, whether it's ass popping, dick sucking. I got news for you. That means you're gay. Something should have already caught you off guard about this guy. Other than his shorter hair. No, that's, that's not funny. I understand his pain. The thing to point out was that he was actually happy. Sure, his acting wasn't the best. And it gets me a little nervous when I realize I could see Lotte God in a CW show in the future. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. These videos so far drastically go against the man we all know him as today. It's almost scary. What happened for this man to change so drastically? Back then, he was just making skits, which honestly kind of makes Lotte God a pioneer for the genre that would blow up heavily when sites like Vine became big. I don't really find any of his skits funny to be honest, but I'm sure people did at the time because he did have an audience watching his stuff. If he did this a little later though, we might have seen a complete shift in the timeline. You know, he was only about, oh, I don't know, six years too early for this. Speaking of six years, I wonder what Lotte God was up to in 2012. This is a f video to some fat f on YouTube named Boogie. 2988. Now, I'm tired of this fat popping up in all my search engines when I'm looking for a workout video. I don't give a about the aftermath from any of you boogie fans that feel sorry for this greasy, you fat, disgusting, ass smelling, blah, cheese drinking, Crisco bathing, lard gargling, calorie thieving, Cabbage Patch Face having, Dr. Robotnik looking, Wingstop eating, McDonald's gorging, 
T-Rex arm having, non-vegetable eating, cook on a George Foreman grill just to drink out the drip tray, wide load, hungry, hungry hippo, planet, pretending to have a thyroid problem, well, slash free willy, part bus, Yokozuna, flubber, this was probably a joke, right? At the time, this could have easily been a way a lot of people reasoned with what could only be described as the biggest heel turn of 2012. Up to that point, Lotte God made regular ass skit content. He was happy. So why did he choose to so suddenly go after Boogie? Boogie at the time hadn't reached the black hole of anti-charisma he would later become, so he actually had a lot of fans. Fans who would be willing to defend him. So a lot of people, including me, summed this up as a simple pl bl 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 So a lot of people, including me, summed this up as a simple publicity stunt made to get views and more eyes on Lotte God. I mean, just by the way he spoke and the type of video this was, I just couldn't take this seriously. He was incredibly well-spoken even while he was complaining about his lack of views. But what I and many others didn't realize at the time was that this was our first look into the real Lotte God. I sure do love being sick, it's so awesome. Ironically enough, that's when he would start to call himself that. Changing his content from mostly skit videos to Street Fighter videos. I don't know, I said it with like an American accent. Fighter. That was weird. His name came from the fact that he always used low take characters in fighting games. Because LTG didn't own a capture card, he had no choice but to record his screen from a camera, which gets me so nostalgic it's not even funny. This was low-key kind of acceptable at the time. There were so many videos shot in this exact same quality, so people weren't bashing him for it, and were actually subscribing. Nothing really happened for two years, except something that would define LTG's early infamy and community. Communities. The FGC or fighting game community is a complete shit show. And in the 2010s, the only thing that could match its toxicity was the amount of unwashed folk attending events. They still got nothing on Yu-Gi-Oh fans though. There are rules in place now to make sure that doesn't happen again. People take these games very seriously due to most fighting games having some sort of ranked system. I was about to make a joke how these virtual numbers meant nothing and people were stupid for caring so much, but then I remembered my primary source of income is also just a bunch of virtual numbers, so I apologize. But then the first low tier god moment occurred. Low tier god moments are the ones I'm sure you've seen before. Moments where he just can't help himself and keeps going. It was already pretty bad in a lot of his fighting game videos. Nigga, I just cut on the fucking game and niggas keep teabagging me right! Like, nigga, play the game, you bitch-ass fag! But up until now, I don't think anyone saw as big as a freakout as the Wednesday Night Fight series. For context, LTG had become known for rage quitting and flaming any opponent he believed didn't deserve to beat him. So a lot of people at the Wednesday Night Fight series were preying on his downfall. Lotte God was already pretty infamous for the stuff he said online. So of course, the moment he gets to real life, a clip of him instantly goes viral. Everybody is shitting on him by this point. Even the commentators throughout the entire match are literally rinsing him. All right. So oh, it's Lotte. Yes, you didn't know this. Okay, I knew this is why I sat down. So do we, can we, do we have time for a little I, backstory? Yes, tell it. Okay. So, but be PG with what would be PG about this? This guy plays Rose. He plays online a lot. He's got a YouTube video series. You should check it out if you get a, a, a chance to. But um, let's just say that this guy is very rude, uh, very crude, and he thinks he's better than everyone. I have often got many hate mail from him with a lot of slurs. And, and then at the end of it, after I proceed to 5 0 him, yep. he asks me for advice. Yeah, yeah, so it's friends. No, 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 second the round. Second round. He might but, have. But see, he said like months ago, oh, I'm gonna show up oh, to local events. Boy, he and he thinks never that has. Shoto's are scrubs, yeah, right? He thinks the only three characters in this game that are viable are Rose, Dan, and DJ. Everything by, else is by viable, he means like, like you get respect. Yeah, you get women. respect for winning. Yeah. Yeah. And despite that fact, LTG still called out other FGC players afterwards. 
the balls on this man are insane. By the end of the year, LTG would make a video addressing the internet. At first, I thought it must be an apology or something. Lote God did make a fool of himself in front of thousands of people who both attended and watched the event. And considering that this is the fighting game community, he was definitely receiving some type of harassment for this. It's a story that is as old as time. Someone gets a bit of a big head and is humbled by a bunch of randoms. That didn't happen though. I think what re-triggered it is this. When the whole 14 year old chubby obese kid, right? Did the video. I made a video about it. That's when I started getting a tirade. People trying to dig up fake background stories on me. All types of shit. Now the problem is with you people you know what fucks with you online people? You know what really fucks with you? I think what fucks with you is the fact that you guys are probably in a better state, a better current state of life financially, everything. You might have this this 40, this 40 hour a week job where you're making a good three grand a month or more than that. And you're missing something. And you know what it is? It's confidence. And I figured out that's one of the main things that really destroys you online people about me. It's the fact that someone in my current state of life is shitting on you with confidence. I, I have so much poison, so much pride, and the fact that I'm making this, this cheap minimum wage and working at Goodwill, we'll touch that topic too. It, it really destroys you because you're like, wait a minute, how is this guy so fucking arrogant, so confident, but he works here, he does this and does that. You know why? Because my exteriors are tougher than yours. Think about it. He doubled down, holy shit. This is why I believed a lot of people at the time genuinely started watching LTG in sincerity. Because I have to admit that I have some respect for the fact that he straight up unironically thinks he did nothing wrong. If you weren't in his corner, then you are against him. And if you are against him, then you could get in the bin. His beef with the FGC wasn't finished yet. As he began a series with someone called Viscant, who Lote God used as an example as to why many gamers don't have girlfriends. A first attempt was created, and one of my favorite clips ever shows up as an interviewer asks Viscant some questions. How do you feel about your face being the promo of that video? It goes back further than that. He's been disrespecting me for a while. I already beat him. I beat him 20 to 6. I don't even know why we're having this match except for the fact that he keeps using my name and then he keeps ducking me. I mean, if you're going to talk shit, then don't duck. If you're going to talk, then back it up. If you're going to be a bitch, then run like a bitch. Wherever you are, you're a bitch. Bitch! Bitch! Come here, bitch! Okay, editing me, pause right here. This guy, this fucking guy. <laughs> I'm a pretty healthy guy, but like, I know Lote God could fold me in half, probably, it's a 60-40. So Viscan over here must be fucking shitting himself seeing him pull up like that. Now, of course, I'm not saying this situation should have ever come to blows because at the end of the day, it's a fucking game and only losers run hands over the outcome of a game. But LTG does a literal fucking character intro and gets on the mic. I don't know you as bitch. I know you as... You know me as low tier guy. <laughs> And that was when I realized that his boogie video was entirely serious. Because he was subtly threatening a dude over a fucking Twitter beef over a fighting game. I don't think there is anything more pathetic than that. Oh yeah, he lost by the way. Look, what I do in my spare time, I work two jobs, but what I do in my spare time, I volunteer with Father Joe. So what that is in San Diego, that's a homeless outreach. I help people get off of drugs. That's what I do in my spare time. So you saying that all I do is play video games? You saying that I'm on meth, that I do drugs? No, seriously. That. That's bullsh**. That's, that, that's, what, that's what I do in my spare time. Hey, hey. Okay, 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 okay. And that, look, I, 
I got one more thing to say. I got one more thing to say. So there's going to come a point when you forget about what happened, and you're going to want to come back at me, and you're going to want to wash the taste of my dick out of your mouth. So, so what I'm telling you then is, look, one thing you said on Twitter, one thing you said on Twitter, that was right. That was right. I am too old to be playing with a child. So what, what I want you to do, what I want you to do is go back to the McDonald's that you work at, ask your boss to give you some overtime, and then, and then come back and play me for more money, because this was kid stuff. And I'm done. No, that's it. No hate to Viscount here, but I was coming up with better shit in primary school. His gamer rage moments were starting to become a lot more frequent and intense after this point. I really think the loss got to him. There's countless clips of this guy just flipping his shit. And if that chair looks familiar, it's because it's from the most infamous Lote God moment. Lote God further solidified his status as a fragile baby by copyright claiming videos using his clips and saying that he wouldn't stream with facecam until the clips of him were gone, which you should never do by the way. Acknowledging trolls is one of the worst things you could ever do, seriously. But even with all this negativity aimed at him, his numbers were still going up. He even fought Darkseid Phil at one point, which was like the Gojo vs Sukuna of lol cows I guess. Things were continuing as normal for Lote God, selling moderator status to his viewers for $50, switching over to PS4 after receiving too many console bans, wait isn't that against TOS? So his Twitch was banned, and he would move over to YouTube with some brand new stream rules. Oh god Lote God what are you doing man? Motivated. Determined, resilient, confident, mentally untouchable. Now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! <laughs> Considering what happened next, this is really, really funny. In 2017, LTG would go up against Broly Legs, a person with arthrogrisis. Arthro arthro Okay, hang on, I don't know how to say that, so I need to like look this up. A person with arthroprogrosis, leaving them with the inability to use their arms and legs properly. The only thing Broly had full movement over is their neck and head. With this, however, they managed to be the number one ranked Chun-Li player in Ultra Street Fighter 4, and placed in the top 30 in an EVO championship, which is actually a pretty big deal considering how many able-bodied people attend these events. The only way Broly can actually play fighting games is by using their mouth, and to see them this good at something is inspiring. Not only because it shows Broly's skill, but also their endurance and pers perseverance. The word is perseverance, you fucking idiot. But then they ran into Lote God. I'm good, dude. I'm just, I just can't, I can't accept losses where I bodied you and you just get some fake fucking shit on me. Slobbering all over fucking controllers and shit. I'm good. I'd rather quit, lose another 500 points. Okay then. Of course, there was a multi-minute long monologue afterwards. His justification for this was that Broly was being mean to him on Twitter, which apparently gives him the justification to be ableist. Right. The Covenant would be found at this time too. What is the Covenant, you're asking? Well... You see a bunch of us in black cloaks running towards you. You see me in a gold cloak. A big, tall, muscular, evil-ass motherfucker running at you. First, I start off like this, because I don't need my full speed to catch you. Then I see you start to speed up. Then I start speeding. Then I just go, and I just sick my whole covenant, and they're just chasing you, running at you like wolves in black, in black capes. They tackle you. Of course, with all of this, someone eventually did make a proper video on Lote God. June the King made the most popular video on Lote God. He saw this and attempted to dox June and have his channel deleted. I need you guys to try to try to go find that uh, fake ass documentary about me. I had that shit removed for complete ridicule, slander, and everything all of the above. But if I can get a, if I can get a hold to a couple other people off that channel um, that he's uploading videos about. We could all submit flags and kill that dude's channel. So basically what I got to do tomorrow is go and file a civil suit on this dude. I have his, his actual real name and all that type of shit. You cannot publicly...
put out people's try to put out people's information. I'm taking this shit very serious, all right? Very serious. That's all I'm gonna say about it. As soon as my shit pulls up, we'll say his name on stream. You cannot. I shouldn't have to say this, but abusing the corporate system to get someone doxxed is bad. That's it. And the idea that this is a fair quote unquote clap back for someone simply making a video on a very accessible guy with a lot of information out on him further shows how completely tapped this guy is. As much as he'd like to say that he was an unflappable, mentally stable and strong person, his entire history has disproved that. He is a delusional, insecure gym bro who plays fighting games. That's how he's always been up until that point and that's how things were going to be until he started beefing with Gideon. What? Corey Kenshin made a video on YouTube and racism. A very intelligent YouTube viewer decided to focus on the fact that Corey had spoken to Lote God once instead of the whole point of the video, which is to be expected at this point. People can say YouTube is sexist or screws over its creators, but the second you say it's racist, everyone has a problem. That's a topic for another day, however. Right now, Koi was saying that he hadn't spoken to Lote God since he first met him. Lol, this is crazy. I do not support this man. I found out about Lote God because I used a one second clip in one of my edits. So he quote unquote roasted me. After talking to him about those clips, I asked him about getting those other clips removed. Mind you, I'm just meeting him. Thought he was a funny streamer until some people warned me about his past. Ever since, I haven't had any correspondence with this man. Y'all are wildin. Lote God seemed to take this incredibly personally, however, and would talk about this on stream. It was so weird seeing him so legitimately hurt here. The only time I can think of him being this very upset was when he was kicked off a Big Brother style show for Street Fighter. No, I'm not joking. Also, during this little era, Lote God starts off with both Kai Sana and Jideon, which actually took me out of writing this part of the video for like a week. I can't think of two black creators that drain me as much as they do. At least Jideon found God or something i don't care anymore all of lote god's socials were also shot down though he did get his twitch channel back after this point though something weird started to happen lote god was being positive again despite the fact that many people were reacting to his streams harassing him and trying to get his channel down he didn't care i didn't work out i didn't leave the house i didn't do shit for 48 hours I didn't cry. I don't know how to cry anyway. There's nothing to do with death or I didn't lose a limb. I, I just sat here like an alien for two days. He was spouting some actual LGBT positive takes, which I would have never have imagined coming out of this guy's mouth, especially considering how volatile he usually is. This led to XQC reacting to him and dropping some of his riveting reaction content and also getting more eyes on low tier God. 2023 has been a scarily positive time for him, and he would continue this rhetoric in an interview with Gideon. Gideon went a few steps further and began speaking to LTG on a regular basis. This would eventually lead to an hour-long interview where Gideon and everyone watching finally got the chance to see what made LTG tick. It's that energy. You have that boisterous spirit, bro. You have that ego spirit. That's why niggas want to see you fail. And you, and you know why I got an ego? Because I spent so many fucking years of my life smiling at motherfuckers for free sitting here letting people walk over me this and that and i finally got to a point where you know what i got to a point in life where i was like i'm not letting anybody say shit to me ever again that's why i got that fucking bravado i got the bravado like that because the world did that shit to me but now i'm a lot better than what i used to be i used to respond to everything say this say that say this say that my last little couple years on youtube man everybody will tell you i cleaned up everything because I finally started to understand what it was and soak it in for what it is and realize that some motherfuckers are just miserable. Wait, wait, why am I responding to this dude? Like, I, I put myself in this fucking position. If I'd have never did everything I did, we wouldn't be on this call. Is Lote God redeemed? Hell no. We can't just ignore everything the dude did because he's actually chill now. I don't know if anyone he's hurt in the past actually got an apology. 
Like, I don't know, the dude he doxed or shot ableist remarks at, those would be pretty high up on my list. Well, no, guys, he's positive now, so it's fine. I'm glad he beat his demons and is a happier guy, but I'm not letting it go because I definitely have a personal stake in all of this, and I'm not just an objective observer of no skin in the game. Lotte God is such a weird person to talk about because a part of me wants to clap for doing the bare minimum of not being a bigot. But then he just drops these small little nuggets throughout his entire life that make him so unironically annoying to like. On the one hand, he is positive now. However, his entire past makes me want to challenge him to a boxing match and lose. I'd lose. So now I pose the question to the funny little viewers watching this piece of shit video. Do you think that it's okay to ignore what a person has done if they're a good person now? Or do you think they should be held accountable for their actions? The reason I say person and not creator is because we all know that one person who was really shitty to us when we were younger, but they seem mostly fine now. I am actually curious to see what people think because it's probably different from my take and that makes the world more interesting. So go argue about the ethics of human rights in the comments or something. He did what? Thanks for watching. I have no clue if this video is gonna release in time because I wasn't joking. Writing that last section actually took me out for a week because of how much I dislike talking about cringe ass quick street. <laughs> Writing that last section actually took me out for a week because of how much I dislike talking about lame ass kick streamers. Speaking of streaming, I'm gonna start streaming stuff in April again. I have no clue what yet, probably just some lethal company because I have quite a bit of fun with that. Though, I don't know. We'll see how I'm feeling in like a week since I'm gonna go to insomnia this weekend. If like my 3% UK audience wants to say hello, then go ahead, I don't buy it. Plus, as generic as I look, I am also stupidly tall for no reason, so I will definitely stand up more than I'd like. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, I can thank the $5 channel members. Sabin, The Wolf Drake, Charlie, Levi, Nate Russellman, Isra Felsfire, King Johnny TH445, Ant, Pwep, Nekocho Official, Grizzly Bear 1996, and Kinda Snowy. I love you guys, specifically the people who give me more money than the rest. And if you want to join the list of fans I actually remember the names of, then you can give me money too. And yeah, that's it. I hope to see like one of you at Insomnia maybe. Uh, have a wonderful day. See ya lads.